Greetings everyone! I'm happy to share with you this lesson and paragraph, Writing with Structure and Style. Now, if you're reflective enough, you may have noticed that um, throughout the semester, you're actually being prepared for something great, uh, a noble undertaking. Consider this uh, maybe your hero's journey. Your hero's journey will actually lead you or give you a quest. That quest is to write an essay that is uh, anchored on the principles of clear and effective writing with a clear introduction, body conclusion, and guided by a well-formulated thesis. This is one example. You may read it, examine it, and analyze how the paragraphs are ordered. So our objectives, specifically for this lesson, is to identify topic and supporting details in a paragraph and to get to know more the different characteristics of clear and effective paragraph, namely coherence, unity, and emphasis. And I'll be giving you sample paragraphs. You will also analyze each based on their modes of development. So since uh, there are numerous paragraphs i may not read all of them but you need to pause the video in order to study each okay so our focus will be part a on structure and for next meeting part b on style now okay so in terms of structure you are expected to write unified paragraphs how do you do that Make sure your paragraph develops a single central idea, idea only one. Some students uh, tend to give different ideas in only one paragraph, and that is a result of lack of planning. So you need to plan. That's why we do an outline, a writing outline first. Two ways to achieve this, through developing one topic sentence, which may be directly or indirectly stated explicit or implicit or b through the clincher sentence so this is one example of a paragraph that is really unified so try to pick the topic sentence pause the video and read so if you identify the first sentence as the topic then you are correct see how the other sentences all support or help together to support the first sentence now if you are a beginning uh, beginning uh, writer then you can use a thesis statement at the beginning I don't know a topic sentence the beginning of the paragraph but once you have gained mastery you can now just simply suggest or imply your topic sample paragraph with implied topic sentence so here the topic sentence is not directly stated can you uh, formulate or state it using your own words okay you will find that the topic sentence is actually among hundreds of people as Zon felt alone so this is an example of a paragraph that doesn't really need to explicitly state the topic. Why? Because there is also beauty in implying instead of directly stating the, the topic. This also works well in creative work like in lit literature, short stories, novels, etc. So if, you, if I'm going to ask you, why do you think the author did not explicitly state Okay, and you may note that the paragraph is describing how exactly Azon felt that time. So instead of saying Azon felt alone, the author simply described. Okay, and it's more effective that way because sometimes what is absent 
is what makes the writing special because the audience or the readers can decide for themselves and their imagination is at work. Next, unity through the clincher sentence. Look at the last one. Yes, they came for the three Gs, for God, for glory, and for gold, which um, is supported by the first, second, and the third uh, sentences. So this is your homework. This forms A, B, C, and D. Actually, this is just one paragraph. So you have to choose which is the best topic sentence. Now, another homework, examine paragraph 2. And this time around, you have to uh, identify the function of each sentence. Do they serve as a topic, the de a detail, or is it irrelevant, no longer needed uh, in the explanation or in the development of the topic? Or is it a clincher sentence? A sentence, a clincher is a sentence that wraps up the ideas or it is a concluding sentence. Okay, it leaves a strong impact um, to the readers. So, pause the video and write your answers. Now, this is your homework submission format to be submitted, the homework to be submitted next week. Okay, second way to develop a paragraph or a characteristic of a paragraph is coherence. If unity is keeping sing a, a single central idea, coherence is the act of weaving. So when we say weaving, each um, the reader moves easily from one sentence to the next. There is a very smooth transition. It's uh, the paragraph is easy to take as a whole unit, and it doesn't appear like it was written by different authors, or bec because they appear like separate sentences. So you can achieve this in three ways. Pronoun reference, repetition, and transitional devices. First, pronoun reference. Every time you use a pronoun, make sure the antecedent is well established. The antecedent is the noun being replaced by the pronouns. Also, you do not, please do not uh, shift from one idea or one subject to the next without clear reference to the earlier uh, pronoun or noun. So you have here, for example, surprisingly, the majority of parents I have spoken to have experienced partial or total ignorance of the music their children are dancing to, doing homework to, falling asleep, asleep to. Most claim of, okay, the word most, uh, of course, pertain, pertains to the majority of parents because that is the earlier subject okay most claim they don't listen to rock or can't understand the words if they do so the reader might be confused they are uh, is is it referring to the children or the majority of the parents so you have to be clear on that because you will not suddenly shift to for example in this in this um paragraph you will not suddenly shift to children being the subject instead it has to be consistent it ha you have to refer to the majority of parents because that's how you began your paragraph if you want to shift then make sure it is well and clearly established another one is through repetition examine this paragraph maybe you can pause the video again you can notice here that some lines are repetitive i mean the structure is is uh, repetitive and this kind of repetition has to be it has it shouldn't sound redundant instead it sounds uh, better because you're using a symmetrical pattern another one is true transitional de devices this is where the conjunctions come in so here you use uh, despite the fact that moreover for this reason so that and etc so please review the use of conjunctions so other examples of transitional words and expressions this is not an exhaustive list but you may consider using them okay depending on your purpose Next is emphasis. Being emphatic means um, you're forceful. The paragraph you're writing is emphatic and it leaves impact. So three ways to achieve uh, this 
portrait. Arrange how you arrange the ideas, the climactic order, or the presentation. This is similar to rhetorical sentence pattern. This pertains to your decision making as to how to highlight your meaning. And finally, repetition and parallelism. So, for example, you have this first um, paragraph, combination of the ideas. If you read it, okay, it might sound, but it may be require, it may require you to reread because of how the ideas are arranged. But if you compare it with paragraph two, it has the same idea and yet the structure or the order is better therefore making the paragraph easier to understand and that will benefit your readers of course next emphasis through climactic order so i just gave a sentence because take note what applies to a sentence also applies to a paragraph so what applies to a paragraph also applies to a longer composition Example, to be a professional athlete, one needs great physical skills, courage, intelligence, and perhaps, most of all, an unflinching desire to succeed. The, the effect will not be the same if you mention the last um, line, unflinching desire to succeed, in the beginning. So, again, it's similar to uh, rhetorical sentence patterns. It requires your tactical sense. Okay, activate your tactical sense. So, you have to think of how to best present meaning. Last one is emphasis, repetition, and parallelism. So, example here, my parents complain that I am arrogant, thoughtless, and rebellious. I tell them they misunderstand me. What they see as arrogance is my attempt to be a person in my own right. What they see as thoughtlessness is usually just forgetfulness. What they see as rebelliousness is a drive to be independent. So, notice how effective the use of parallelism is in this case. Okay, if paragraph writing is a skill, then you need tools, right? Much like carpentry, you need tools. In order to make a chair or build a house, you need the tools. In paragraph writing, the tools that you need will be the modes of paragraph development. So, given the following topics, envision how you would develop um these into paragraphs for example one human growth seen as the metamorphosis of a butterfly hmm think about it how how will you develop this into a paragraph the perceptions of man and the insides of women you have two parties here a child's mental universe like you have to describe the inner workings of the mind for a day in a freshman's life. So you will be narrating, right? The events that transpired within a day. Why people mature. So if you have the why, of course, it's gonna have to be cause and effect. So depending on your topic, okay, you will choose the right approach. So the different approaches are the following. Description, definition, classification, illustration and examples, comparison and contrast, analogy, narration, description of a process, cause and effect, enumeration, or listing. So read the different uses because later on, I will be giving sample paragraphs. Oops. Okay. Now, for your homework, you don't need to do anything but simply to study how the modes of development um, are employed in the following. First, okay, something that describes anger. So you have to study these. Maybe you can apply, apply the same technique. Okay, describing another emotion. For example, um, love or respect or another another concept perhaps number two definition this is a definition of a family so when you define make sure you don't stick to dictionary definition make your paragraph more interesting okay maybe you can define using your own words or define a concept by comparing it with another concept or defining a concept based on 
um, its attributes. Third classification for illustration and examples. So what you should be doing is pausing the video and reading the paragraphs to see how the different modes uh, work. What I can give you now are sample paragraphs so that in class, we may have a workshop, okay, in the next meetings. Or maybe the better term is play shop, okay? We, work, we do not just work, we also play. Five, comparison. Six, analogy. This, one, this is a good one. This is from Patricia Evangelista. And narration. Explanation of a process, cause and effect, and listing. So, that's all I can give you for now. And I'll be leaving you a reading and hand another article to study. And uh, since the article will be talking about a specific topic and it has a clear thesis statement as well, we, we can analyze um, how... The different paragraphs are written, structured, and how they all contribute to um, the building of or the support of the thesis statement. Okay, so here are the references. That's it. So make sure you do the homework and read the article to be posted in our WordPress site. Goodbye.